Because you've done going to school for 13 years, four years of college, four years of medical school, two years of residency, to look in my ass. I could have saved you a lot of money and you could have did that shit for free. Uh, she puts me over and then she says, okay, I see the two skin tags on your eyelids, I can take care of that. You got a bump on your cheek, it's a cyst. You got a bump on your elbow, it's a cyst. They're too big to take care of here in the office. So I'm gonna have to send you out to a surgical dermatologist, but after I take care of the two skin tags on your eye, I can take care of that little bump in your groin area. I said, lady, it's not a bump, it's my dick. <laughs> so I go to the surgical dermatologist and she says, Big Red, I hate to tell you, but looking at that, those two uh, so-called cysts, uh, they are, they're not cysts. Been misdiagnosed, you got that nasty C word. And that's something you definitely don't want to hear because you got that nasty C word. And she's like, not only do you have that nasty C word, you got two different types. I'm thinking two different types, nasty C word. So you're telling me I got a cunt growing on my face and my elbow? Uh, she says, it's not a cunt, you jackass, it's cancer. So I'm like thinking, okay, so I got two different kind of cancers. So you start thinking back on your life, where in the hell did I get cancer from? And I'm thinking to myself, well, vaginal cancer on my face. Maybe I shouldn't have given all those free mustache rods to the boys in high school. And that one time, spring break, I went to the fucking Tijuana after the donkey show and I got the fucking fist that elbow deep, uterine cancer on the fucking elbow. <laughs> Uh, I mean, come to the fucking All right, so I'm going to need help with this little bit, and I'm choosing Caden. Come on up, buddy. Come, come on up. Let's give a round of applause to Caden. He's the one who organized this party for my son. I appreciate you, brother. It's going to be nice, quick, and easy. I just need you to hold out your hand, and I'm going to put a pin in your hand. We're going to put up the five in your hand, one at a time. Do you smell it? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> you don't have to smell it, but can you smell it? Yeah. Can you? It's a scent, right? Yeah. All right, so here's, here's, here's number two. Do you see, do you see the fruit? The what? The fruit. No. It's a pear. It's a pear? It's a pear. Okay, so here's, here's, here's the fruit. All right, so now, do you see the snakes? No, I don't. It's three copperheads. Oh. All right, here's two, 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 four. Do you see the cars? No. It's four Lincolns. Okay, so but you didn't get the first four right. We're going we're gonna to go with number five. Do you see the pussy? No. You're never going to see pussy for five cents. Go sit oh. your fucking ass back <laughs> Give it up to King one more time. All right, so that's, that's gonna be my set. But, since it is my son's birthday, we're gonna get him up on stage, okay. and we're gonna let his friends have two minutes each to roast him. Come on up, boy. That's the problem with having a fucking comedian for a day. Yeah. But I'm gonna do my two minutes, I'm gonna do my two minutes first real quick. Yeah, I'll get comfortable. You ready? I suppose. Uh, I remember when you were little, I've got a friend named Mark, and- I'm proud of this one. And Mark is a smart ass. Mark's fucking with him, fucking with him, fucking with him. And my son's just sitting in the passenger seat of my car with his feet hanging out. And he's just dangling his feet. And Mark's fucking with his hair, fucking with this. Next thing I know, my son's like, bam, kick Mark square in the fucking nuts. <laughs> now my friend Mark's got two fucking retarded kids. I don't know if he caused it or not, but Mark's got two fucking retarded kids. Um, also, let's see, um, he's, he's, a, he's a great kid, he, he's, as far as I know, he's only snuck out once, and uh, you definitely don't want to hear this at fucking 11.30 at night, Dragon Lady, as I like to call my ex-wife, is like, our son is missing. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean he's fucking missing? She's like, well, we went into his room and they, he had, you know, pillows and stuff under the blanket, looked up, and, and he, he must have went out the window because um, 
the windows propped open so he could get back in. I was like, so what do you mean? He's missing. He's gone. I'm like, so I started texting him this, that, and the other, and no response, no response. So I go over to the ex-wife's house. By the time I get there, she'd already called the police, reported he was fucking missing. So now they got an APB out on a freaking, I don't know, how old were you then? Like, you were in your year? He was like 15 or 16 years old. And most of his friends that were older, so we think, it, and it's right around Memorial Day, so we think he's at a grad party getting fucked up. And uh, so I'm over there with the ex-wife and her new husband, and I'm just sitting there, and they're hugging, and she's crying, and he's kissing her, and I'm just thinking, I wonder if he knows what my dick tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love, gotta love little stepdad, dad. He's tasting my cock. Um, anyhow, uh, so he finally come, he finally calls at like seven thirty in the fucking morning. I spent fucking the better part of fucking eight hours with ex-wife and her new man. That was a fun fucking evening. He comes, he's like, I'm I'm walking home. We're like, no, stay where you at. We come to get you. Meanwhile, he doesn't know I'm with him, so he thinks he's gonna deal with me later. And well, I jump in the back of their SUV. And we're like, where you at? So we pulled up to the corner of Cypress Wood and Kirkendall, and here he comes bopping out of his little girlfriend's fucking neighborhood. And we're like, yeah, we know where the fuck you are. Uh, and I wanted to I wanted to beat his ass. I really did. Because that was the first time I, I knew he did some stupid shit. And his mom's like, no, don't beat his ass. So the first thing she does, being dragon lady, she gets out of the car, slaps him across his fucking face and was like, don't you ever do that to us again. I'm thinking to myself, he's just getting some pussy. And meanwhile, he still doesn't know I'm in the fucking car. She's like, get in the car. So he comes in, they got tinted windows, he comes to try to get in the back by where I'm at. His <laughs> eyes got as big as a fucking saucer. And he's like, oh shit, dad's here. <laughs> so he goes, I'm like, nope son, the other side. He goes and sits on the other side and his stepfather and his his mother sitting there yelling at him, what are you doing, what are you doing? And just going on and on and on. And I'm like, whenever he uh, gets yelled at, he shuts down. So I'm thinking, y'all not getting shit out of me. And he's like, I ain't telling you, you doing? And I just looked over at him, fucking grabbed him behind that neck and said, boy, if you don't start fucking talking, I'm gonna choke your fucking ass out. He sang like a canary. So mean, the meaning is, y'all all friends, if y'all go do some dirty shit, make sure he keeps his fucking mouth shut. Or at least don't let me put my hands on him. And then the, the last thing I'm gonna roast him about is, he's always asked me, Dad, why I don't have any siblings? Or why I don't have any siblings? You know, that's a question for your mom. She swallowed them all. Ah! <laughs> all right, so, so let's bring up, uh, let's, OJ's known him the most. OJ I, knew him. I, I don't got any ammunition. You, you don't, you don't, have, you don't I, want to roast him? I, I don't got any ammunition. You don't want to roast him? I'm Anthony, good. come on up, buddy. Go for it. Two, two, two minutes to roast him. And just remember, after y'all roast him, he's got, he's got some minutes to roast y'all. How you doing, bud? I'll start with Kanan first, because Kanan organizes. Yeah, he decided to go late after the surprise raid. Look, not my fault I got the wrong directions, okay? Bullshit! Get a 23 DNA test. So, we'll talk to him about that after this. Loki, feel like, Raiden, you ever want to do that? Probably find out 1% black from that swamp test. <laughs> I'll be honest, I know you're athletic. You used to run cross country back in the day. Find out from the dad you got bad knees and you don't have the disease. If you get off the music, stop sucking dick so much. <laughs> That's all you got. Bring up the next guy. Oh, oh. the other tiger. 
ready to go up too. Right? <laughs> uh, he's got he's got ammo on him. He's ammo. ready to go up. Yeah. Hey, make sure you speak for the diaphragm. I want to hear this. Great. Happy birthday. Yeah. Remember Fort Worth. No, Which one? Room. Um, first one hotel room. No. Oh, good God. All right. So a little bit about him. Adventurous as fuck. He'll do anything he sees on YouTube. And so there was this YouTube channel. I forgot the name of it. It's a really famous one. They were doing a breathing exercise. So it was like breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. And you just go completely fucking barrel. I'd like to take the mic right now just to say basically you're hyperventilating to the point where you get high. Yeah, it's that kind of like, what the hell is in your head? So I'm the only, like, I'm one of the two people who didn't do it to make sure him and the group of other kids didn't fucking jump out of a fucking window out of like a 20 story <laughs> hotel room. So, oh, mm. we tried. Yeah, no, no, they tried. They really did try to jump out. And one of them, yeah. You were just screaming Wolverine at the window. <laughs> that was the weirdest shit ever. Because the Mexican dude go, Wolverine! No, from the window. Just, mm. If anybody wants to see the video, I actually do have it on video. Send me the link. <laughs> oh. Send me the link. I'm sorry, but when you jumped on me while you're doing that, I felt your dick and just, what the what fuck, the dude? <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you say? I repeat that shit. No, man. No, please not. You heard it. I didn't hear that shit. You heard it. You heard it. No, man. What are you trying to say? Do not have her better lady jumped on my back trying to help me. You did try to run into a wall. I did run into a wall. Oh, yeah, you did too. And try to run out the um, room too. So, oh, we made it the second time. Oh, shit. There was a second time? I'll take over because this will switch, I guess, kind of into a little bit of another story about Anthony here. Uh, save it, save it, save it, save it for when you're ready. Wait, it's not like This is kind of both of us. Um, after the second time, let's just say Raj wasn't there, and we made it out of the hotel room. Anthony might have made it to the lobby. I don't really remember. All I remember is he went down shirtless in an elevator screaming out Wolverine. Um, <laughs> I proceeded to kind of like black out in the hallway in which Raj found me there and then kind of brought me back and then Anthony just strolled up 15 minutes later wet. So, uh, there's that. Great, this your kid? Yeah, it's my kid. Don't you see the resemblance? Y'all from the West Bank? <laughs> no. Where y'all from? Well, I'm from, I'm from the uh, Esplanade and Ponce de Leon. But uh, when Katrina happened, I was in the parish. Oh, all right. That's what y'all were from. There was a lot. Outside across the street. Oh, another story, a little bit like. This guy has major back problems. And I learned that when he asked me at a pre cal tutoring thing before school. So, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting help because I'm failing the class. <clears throat> this dude called me up and was like, hey, can you fix my back? So I'm like, what? Like, right now? He's like, yeah, I'm not taking your classroom. Yeah, he's outside my classroom waiting for that. I just tell him, hey, lay down. I'll do this stuff. Three APs walk by to see an Indian dude doing that. To the back and then while he's laying down, look at us and just like make eye contact with both of us. Him first to make sure he's okay. Then me, walk away. I cannot tell you the moment. Are you done yet? You gonna roast? Good, time to drop a bomb. Oh. If you crept up on her eye. I don't even know you were done.
just said. <laughs> uh, after that, yeah, there, there was one instance where we, he was, I did ask somebody to fix my back, and you know how you always need somebody taller than you to get that one yeah. behind? He was taller than me at the time by a good bout, and I'm like, man, can you help me with this, whatever, I was walking by. He comes outside, and he's like, man, I can't do this right. And I'm like, okay, well, just go ahead and put some pressure on my back, you know, see if you can get it to pop. This motherfucker thinks I told him to join the WWE, he's going to be like, <laughs> Eight peas walk on by, you know, like, they over here like, what the fuck is happening? Well, I'm getting my ass curb stopped, getting no relief, just sitting there like, what the fuck is this jackass doing? I think they needed, they thought that uh, he was the wrong type of brown and was going to call it a bomb threat on his ass, but, you know, I think we talked him out of it. Uh, anyway. That's what friends are. 7 Eleven or 9 Eleven uh, Brown? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll, I'll go into his title, which I, I find hysterical, all of which oh, is true. Which one? No, no, no. All you're going to you're gonna want to hear this one. You refer to him, uh, and I got one good show oh. this transition, right? So we got. He's an international border hopping, fish smuggling, magic gunsmith with sex sniffing powers. I'll break each Wait one of those fit. down for you. So the magic gunsmith, we we out we out at we're at a party. We we he was had this airsoft gun and with his little one of our friends' little little siblings' toys, whatever. We're just, we're just fucking around with it, broken as fuck, right? This man, all he does is touch it and it starts working. So that's where that comes from. That's probably the least amusing. We'll go into the fish smuggling next. This man has openly admitted to buying fish in a back alley from some really skinny, cracked out looking white dude. <laughs> Apparently. All of us were surprised. Still got the fish. He's still alive. Yep. Now, international border hopping. We'll get to that later. But sex, but sex sniffing's the funny part, right? All throughout high school, you know, teenage boys be getting busy, whatever, being teenage boys. We used to all stay after school in the lab. We all did robotics and stuff together. So we had like this whole closed off area for all of us, right? Yeah. Yep. And we used, we, used to, we used to, you know, get busy in one of the back rooms with our girlfriends after school, right? This dumbass somehow managed to every five, every single time someone was getting busy, walk in and stare directly at them. <laughs> it became so freaking current that this man would walk in every time that we basically had to put a sign on the door that said, fuck off, Raj. That did not stop him. No, it did not. <laughs> One time, I was getting busy, and all of a sudden, all I hear is the door open, so I'm like, oh shit, somebody from the school's coming in, and we start, all of a sudden, Raj comes running through, he's like, help, he's gonna get me. Another one of our friends, who I ain't here tonight, no, Christian, he? Who the fuck is he? Who the fuck is he gonna get me? Christian, by far the craziest of our group, runs in, not filled, mind you, it wasn't that bad, but for whatever reason Raj thought it was, I don't know how he convinced him of that, runs in swinging a condom filled with water, just running after him, and just sprints by. Keep in mind, here, I'll, I'll lay the scene, right? This is like a desk, and we're behind it getting busy. In comes Raj, sprinting across, and then comes another short little Mexican kid with a water-filled condom just running right after him. And we're just like, ah, okay. <laughs> that, 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 that was about the last time I did anything anywhere near Raj, because I don't need uh, whatever the fuck that was running in. <laughs> I actually got more impressed than he could fuck on the floor. <laughs> hey, hey, all I'm gonna say is teenage boys find a way. It helps when you're short. <laughs> anyway, now we're going to get into my favorite part of this, right? International border hopping. So my boy here is from India. Kind of. What did they give it away? <laughs> but he does not work in a call center, so we'll leave that be. But he's actually from Nepal. You see... His parents kind of smuggled him across the border so he could actually be born in India. Because they're native citizens of India, but he was born in Nepal. Which is funny because Nepal sounds a lot like nipples, and this man had a B cup until about senior year. 
Jamaican bullshit. <laughs> Please, yeah, God. Well, back up, right now. We'll bring that up. So, Caden over here, like Anthony said earlier, took a little DNA test. Right? Alright? So, he takes his little DNA test, comes back, what was it? 10? Ten? Ten. Cameroon. 10% black from Cameroon. Now, I walk up to him, I'm like, how the hell? this pasty white slant-eyed man who looks more Asian but has Hispanic in his family, how are you 10% from Cameroon? <laughs> Pirates. <laughs> oh, that shit was That's crazy. Somalia. That he thinks he's a pirate. Whatever. But anyway, Geography. <laughs> motherfucker. Uh -huh. Anyway. We got the history. We got the history. So me and my dad decided to get him a, get, get him a, get a little gift. It's a white shirt. And all it says is 
<laughs> in black letters. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's still in my closet. Anyway, as you're proud. Anyway. Like almost fucking genius. Anyway, I'm going to go way back to middle school for this one. Ooh, I think I know Y'all ever uh, oh, see the size of a thumbtack? <laughs> oh, no. Pretty small, right? Maybe about that small. You barely even see it from the back, right? Right. What Imagine a do? piece of lettuce that small. <laughs> I know where this oh, is going. God damn it. So, we're, we're at the lunch table, you know, BS and shooting the shit. I say a little something that gets under uh, under his skin. He gets all pissed off and huff. Man, I'm leaving. Gets up, stomps his foot down, and on this tiny ass little piece of lettuce, somehow manages to cartoon slide his ass onto the floor. <laughs> Sprawls out, lunch everywhere. Fucking starting to get a little bit of a tear in his eye. We all look down like, what the fuck did he trip on? He's like, man, I tripped on that. <laughs> Tiniest piece of lettuce. He then proceeds to storm off, and we don't ever talk about it again except for every five minutes and every conversation here. <laughs> I won't let you live it down. Another, another, another funny just story about Kate. He's a very particular man and a creature of habit. Oh, well, we can get into that one a little later. Come on, we're out. Because that kind of goes in with this. You know, Caden's a peculiar individual, to say the least. Uh, me and Anthony, we're out there, you know, getting some food. We're going to have a little bonfire at the creek, right? You know, just doing shit out in the woods. And men do, you know what I mean? We're eating some water burger. This motherfucker. The condiments slash pickles slash whatever it might be were not distributed on his burger in a manner to his liking. He then proceeds to have a five minute rant about it, gets up off the log we're sitting on, keep in mind me and Anthony just casually just eating our burgers, enjoying our time, grabs his burger, looks at it, looks at the creek, goes, fuck it, sandwich. And then just walks off after hurling his burger into the creek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paid for a whole ass water burger. Water burger ain't cheap, y'all. Yeah. Threw the whole ass burger with only one bite out of it into a creek because there wasn't enough mustard on one side of the burger. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real shit. That's a real shit right there. And the motherfucker had the gall to ask me, hey, I'm a hungry ass. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing, going back on how peculiar he is, I had him over to my house a couple times when we were bullshit, you know, play the game, whatnot. Right. He, he over here at my he over here at my house, right? He spent a couple hours over there, rest of the night, decided to spend the night, fucking hang out. Goes back home. He texts me. He's like, Did we get back to school? He's like, man, I had a good time, whatever, blah blah blah. Start talking about shit the next day. He's like, I'm like, he's like, where was X Y Z? Because I had something that I didn't show him, like that he wanted to see when he came over, right? right? I'm like, it was in the closet. He's like, wait, y'all had closets? <laughs> I'm like, how the hell are you gonna spend fucking 24 hours at my house and not notice that there's a goddamn closet in every room you went? You did not notice the pantry. You did not notice my closet. You did not notice the closet in the bathroom that you used to get a towel. <laughs> Bitch, how the fuck you not see the closets? They everywhere. <laughs> Look, if there's a door, it doesn't exist. It does. It's like peekaboo. Oh, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. What, what it's not there. If closets aren't real, that's a good perfect. question. It's not real. It doesn't exist. There's houses with no closets. <laughs> no, I don't know. In, 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 in his world, in the trailer park, they have to have closets. I just gotta put the meth somewhere. I, 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 wonder, I wonder sometimes. Does this man be behaving like a gremlin? You know, you ever you ever see them like cracked out dudes on the street and they kind of hobble over to their cardboard box and spend the night? That's Caden's uncle. Which <laughs> one? You can kind of tell from the hair and everything else. That kind of explains the hodgepodge of DNA that made him up. That can only come from a broken used condom. <laughs> Which, to be fair, isn't out of your mother's realm of possibility. Look, you're getting bougie if you think she used condoms, okay? <laughs> you're getting bougie. That's rich behavior. 
like that's about all I got. I don't know if I want to upload on that or not. Come on, hit me with it. Unload. I don't think you should be unknown in any way. I'm very. 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 i am Everyone has always told me I got a little bit of an ego problem. Right? Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. This yeah. Is not. Mm -hmm. Blame this motherfucker. <laughs> because at the end of the day, right? Let's let's look at it. What are my initials? Brayton, Elias, Dempsey. What does that spell if you look at the first letter? Red. Red. That's a little red. This motherfucker is so goddamn egotistical that he had to name his fucking sperm after himself. <laughs> and let's just say it's not a me thing I like to hold up. Because look at it. He's big, he's ugly, he's got his tail, toenails, man. Dogs, man. Come on. I didn't even see this. Gold shit. member, Austin Powers. <laughs> that bastard. The father. My father. Yeah, exactly. My father. Don't even turn top off. I'm not going to get mad. All right. Finish this off with a mic, right? Oh, he said, finish this off with a mic. Thanks, man. You know, you also make no sense. You know, in, in recent years, I've begun to think, you know, you might have some form of dementia or Alzheimer's or some shit. You forget everything every five minutes. Like, just a couple minutes ago on stage, you told me all the jokes, right? You know? First he crosses the border to Texas, and you know, there's swans, nine inches. Five seconds later, it's a goddamn Tic Tac in the front of office. What happened? <laughs> Your dick don't triple like that. Your brain might, but... Fat, fat, fat. Hey, hey. Fat you one. Fat you one. <laughs> can only see half of you. know, my dad, my dad's, my dad's lived a hard life, and I had a lot of that. I respect him greatly for all the things he managed to overcome, especially when it comes to his back pain and obviously now beating cancer. Hopefully. We, got, we do got one more, one or two more matches to check out, but you know, hopefully beating it. So, you know, I gotta give him all the props in the world for that. Right? Um, that that's something I do admire and respect. But my only question, and you know, this goes to a lot of folks out there too. You know, a lot of folks out there be doing that. How the fuck are you going to, you know, fight a world war, beat cancer, any of these things, and not know how to work your goddamn cell phone? <laughs> the amount of times this man has walked up trying to, you know, oh, we only do Apple Pay here, sir. And he walks up, proceeds to fiddle with it, and then get mad at the cashier because somehow it's her problem. It's a system that is not her. Now this has happened so many times I've just gotten used to it. I just kind of do a little eye roll when he gets fed up and decides to throw a temper tantrum like a five-year-old. <laughs> Which he does a lot. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's my dad and a good dude. But, you know, he made me, so I guess all the good is left with that. All the good is this. Which, but, you know, my dad, my dad, my dad is, a, is a good dude. A little retarded, a little crazy. Just a little bit. Just like his dick, but it's fine. Anyway, that's my dad. That's me. That's my friends. You know, I, th I appreciate y'all having me out. I appreciate all of y'all back there for staying in with us. Woo! Yeah, you know, I don't care if you come to the back to the I'm going to leave y'all with some actual comedy for the night, right? Like one little quick little, little story, right? So there's this, uh, there's this businessman, right? He's going out of town. He wants to try to, you know, he's worried about his wife cheating on him while he's away. It's going to be an extended stay type of thing. Oh, no. You know, he's like, I want to make sure my wife has something that she's pleasure to her so don't cheat her on me when I leave. You know, trying to make sure she stays faithful to him. So he goes, he goes to one of them little boutique shops, you know what I mean? Y'all see him on the side of the freeway and whatnot. He goes out there and he's like, 
he doesn't look and he's looking, he doesn't see anything that he's you know, meeting needs, right? So he, he, he goes up to the shopkeeper, he's like, hey, y'all got anything, you know, in this situation? And the shopkeeper comes out with this old wooden box. He's like, this is the voodoo dead. And he's like, voodoo dead, what to do? He's like, all right, he opens the box, he says, voodoo dead door. This little wooden dildo floats up out the box, slams it into the door, and humps it until there's a crack in it. He then says, move the big box, he goes back to the box, closes the box. So eventually the man convinces it to sell it to him. Right? He goes home and before he leaves for the trip, he's like, move the my wife. Blows up out the box, starts out with his wife, he leaves. Now he neglected to mention to her how to turn it off. So he's unreasonable on the plane and whatnot. She's driving to the hospital, swerving from the orgasm. Gets <laughs> pulled over by the police, right? The police pulls her over. She's like, thank God, officer. I got a fool who's repeatedly humping me. I need help. Officer then says, bitch, who did take my ass? I'm going to kill you. That's all I got. And, uh, <laughs> uh, for, for the back, just a bit. I want to thank you guys at Wall and Chief and Dacker for letting us have this little party here. Hey, thanks, thanks to Mac. You're funny for letting us uh, have a little quick roast in the middle of this here. And I know we got one more comedian, uh, Jake the Door. He, I don't know if he's got his puppet for him or not, but either way, he's, he's funny with his puppets. Um, I just want to say one, one more thing about my son. He's highly intelligent. He's, other than the fact that you're I'm thinking that you might be a little gay from hearing some of these fucking stories, I'm a little worried. But uh, he comes up to me and he says, Dad, I changed my major. I'm like, okay, so why would I be mad? A lot of people change their major. I'm like, so what do you want to be? He goes, uh, well, I want to be a psychiatrist. I'm like, Psychologist, he was a psychiatrist. I want the I want the MD behind my name. So he wants he wants to be a doctor, and that's what he's going to school for. Um, but when he first said I changed my major, he goes he brings on this pamphlet career path in school, and I'm like, what do you do with a psychology degree? So we're going down there, and I'm like, psychiatrist, psychologist, the rapist. I'm like, what the fuck? You got to go to school to be a rapist? He's like, no, Dad, you dumbass. That's a therapist. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just glad you don't want to be the rapist because then I got to go back to school and get a law degree to get him out of trouble. And you know, I might even, I've already got a PhD. Um, I'm poor, hungry, and depressed. So there's my PhD. That's my time. Thank you guys. I don't know. I don't know. Coming up back yeah, I'll introduce you. So, so coming coming to the stage next here, we got the very funny. What you want to go by tonight? Pop your granny or the creator? Well, he's known by two names. He's known as the creator when he doesn't have his puppets, and when he does have his puppets, that's funny as shit and a little geriatric with bad knees, kind of like me. He's known as the very funny Pops and Granny. Give it up for Pops and Granny, the creator. My son's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Julie. I thought you were What's your name? Ray. He's like Julie. Ray Ray. Ray Ray. Ray Ray. How y'all doing? Thanks. Thanks.